Okay, for today we're going to talk about the uh, room, which is the new Google uh, architecture frameworks, which creates a ORM, which is an object relational map on top of SQLite. So room is basically a layer that hides you from the SQL helper classes and the SQLite database. It, uh, it creates a SQLite database under the covers, um, but we don't actually have to interact with the SQLite database. I'm taking most of this from, the, from this Medium article called Building Database with Room Persistence, and then we're using the code that um, is referenced in the article. So there are three parts. We have the entity, which is the single table row. Um, and it represents da data for a single table row. We'll look at that in a second. We have the data access object, which defines the method that accesses the database. So select star from table. And then we have the database itself, where we have to define um, extend room database and um, then the DAOs will act on that database and uh, allow us to reference them using the entities in the first part. So how do we create a, uh, a room project? Well, we create a new project under Android Studio. We add the dependencies in the build.gradle file. We create an entity called user. Um, we create a database data access object using an interface. And then we create a database holder called app database. And then we add the users by changing the empty activity to just add a new user each time. So we just need to add the dependencies for the uh, Android architecture persistence room and the runtime and then for the compiler. And in this case, we are using the, he's using the alpha, but now that we're at Android Studio 3.0, we could certainly use the 1.0.0 uh, because it's out of alpha. Okay, so this is how you would create a user. So in this case, we have a user, and there are four keys. There's a primary key, which is just an auto-generated ID, one, two, three, four. We have a first name, a last name, and an age. And then um, we have the getters and setters for each of those four columns in our user table. Okay, so then now we have our DAO, or data access object. So what that does is it maps a method to a select statement, to a SQL statement. So in this case, we have a method called get all, and it's gonna do select star from user, and we have select count from user, which is gonna give us the, if we call int users, it will run that on the database and just return it into us. Um, as the result, um, we can also use parameters by saying find by name, string first name, last name, and we'll return the uh, user object or objects based on whether that select statement was uh, whatever it returned using the parameters first name and last name. Then we create a database holder called app database. So I took this from the um, from the code. So basically what it's saying is it's he's calling the database app database. It is uh, using the user class as the entity. Its version is one. It extends room database and that uses the user DAO. And then we have, in order to create the database to get the app database context, we have a database builder. And you'll see a lot of this in Android where basically you call a database builder and then you add a bunch of parameters afterwards to define how it works. So in this case, we have database builder, get application context. Um, we're using the app database class and the name of the database is user database. And we're going to have uh, allow main thread queries and then dot build will just build it because it's a builder method. And we also have a destroy instance where we can destroy it too as well. Okay, so to add users, you have a, uh, to be able to use room, basically if we want to have a bunch of functions, we would have an add user, which was insert all user, um, which is gets called by the second method, which is populate with test data. So this is the guy who wrote it. So AJ Sani, and he's 25, so remember it's got four columns. The first is a primary key, which we don't touch, so we just enter um, AJ Sani 25, and then we say add user DB user, passing in this user object. And then when we say add user, it will insert the user um, into the app database using the user that we just defined in our populate with test data. Okay, and if we wanna delete users, we can call a function called nuke table, which will run the query called delete from my table. Okay, you can also migrate existing apps to Room. So you add Room libraries to your project, create an entity class for each table, create a 
DAO interface defining database access models, uh, create the room database class listing entities which we just had, and then add the DAO, and then create the database object using the room class. And then you would get the DAO instance from database and use the DAO to perform database op operations and remove any unused classes related to the SQLite API. So that would be the SQLite helper classes and the SQL database class. You wouldn't need them anymore because Room is replacing them. Okay, I think that's it. And um, now we're just gonna have a quick look at the code. So in this, we have a main activity and uh, our main activity layout is pretty simple. It's not coming up. Um, I can show you what it looks like in, oh, there it is. Okay, so it is uh, very straightforward. We have basically a click here, and every time that you click here, it's going to add that user again, the AJ user that we saw before. Um, we have a main activity, we have a DAO, which we just looked at, which was um, our data access object. Probably should start with the entity. Let's look at the entity first. We have the entity, which is the primary key, auto-generated so we don't touch it. Uh, we have our DAO, which is the methods that we're going to use. We have our app database, which is creating the database. And then we have our main activity, which is calling the database. Okay. Um, if we run that, basically it's going to uh, fire up the emulator. I used the Google, uh, an emulator that was uh, using the API, um, the Google AP, the Google API, uh, API. Sorry, that's hard to explain That's ex to without showing. So if you go Tools, Android, um, ABD Manager, okay, and you create an ABD, basically when you try to create your ABD, you want to make sure that you are using the Google APIs here because if you're using the Google APIs, then you can um, ADB shell onto the uh, emulator and uh, SU to root, and then you can see that the database actually exists underneath it. So I've already run this earlier, and I've hit click here a bunch of times. So if I'm in the platform tools directory, so if I run the Android device bridge and do shell to log onto the emulator, and then do SU, I'll see this. So I'm now in the top level directory. I want to go to data data. If I do an LS, I can see everything that's in here. I know that it is the um, com.nagaro persistence activity. So I know that it is com.nagaro room demo that I need to be into. So I cd cd com. G, that should be enough. And then I have uh, three directories. I want to see the databases. And I see a user database, a user database journal, which is anything that hasn't been committed is in the journal. And if I do SQLite, Three. Let's make that a bit bigger. Sixteen by twelve. Oh, that's terrible. Let's do SQLite database, user database. And if I do dot dump, which will show me everything in the table, you can see that it is a SQLite database. So what we did was we created a, um, a table called user. It's in room or master table, which is set up by room. And then it has three values because I clicked it three times. So it has values one, two, three for the three users that are in our user table, okay? And uh, that's it.